Thank you. I want to thank Senator Warren for her, her kindness on that. Um, and thank you both for your hard work. In regards to Parchin and the IAEA agreement and moving forward, and this has been asked by others, but I, I want to try to clarify. Uh, moving ahead in Parchin and every other facility, is it your understanding that the IAEA can get into every facility, that if they choose to, that they can go in there physically themselves as opposed to having uh, Iran turn over materials, that they have physical access? Uh, I'd be happy to get into this in greater detail in a classified session. <clears throat> Senator, what I can tell you is that whatever the IAEA believes that it needs to do to have a technically authenticated result for whatever access they believe they need to have, uh, they will get it. So if they believe they need to have physical access to a place, that will not be denied? As I said, whatever they believe they need for a technically authenticated process, they will get under the agreements that we have negotiated here. And I'll be glad to discuss this in greater and more okay. explicit detail in a classified setting. That would be fine. We can talk this afternoon, but that sounds like a yes to me. Um, is there reason to believe there's any other documents out there? No. no if there other... are, I don't know about them. Okay. Have you asked the IAEA if there are any other documents out there? I have not asked them explicitly, but I did see the Director General when he arrived here yesterday. We talked... Uh, I asked him uh, questions about uh, uh, where we were with various things, and I have no reason to believe there's any other document. Have you asked uh, the Iranians who you've had these discussions with, do you have any other agreements with anybody else at this time that we don't know about? Uh, I have not asked that question explicitly, but given the hours and hours we have spent together, I do not believe there are any other documents. I think that is a question well worth asking um, as we look forward. Mr. Zubin, the alternative theory that's been put out there, or one of the alternative scenarios, is that the United States walks away and then we, in effect, go country by country saying, make a choice economically. Um, don't deal with Iran or else we'll sanction your, uh, in, in effect, we won't deal with your economy. What is the, uh, the likeliness of that kind of scenario having success? In the event of us walking away from this deal, I think we would be very much swimming against the, the tide because the, the cooperation we've obtained to date in going around the world, just as you describe, and saying we need to pressure Iran was predicated on a diplomatic path. And so China, India, South Korea could see, here's a roadway to test Iran to see if they're ready to make a deal. So and in this context, we'd be walking away from that. And I apologize because time is limited. But so if we walk away, what is, what is left in terms of strength of sanctions? Because some folks have said, we still have significant impact on Iran at that time. What is left as, it, as we obviously know we'll still have sanctions in place. So what other global uh, effects will take place? So the, the U.S., as you note, Senator, would retain our unilateral sanctions. Our, basically, our right. primary embargo on Iran remains in place. And that's frankly true, notwithstanding the deal. Either way, our, our embargo is going to remain in place. The EU has sanctions with respect to Iran's bad activity outside the nuclear file, terrorism, human rights, those sanctions would remain in place. But the most severe economic sanctions that we've spent time talking about today and that Congress helped to put in place affect things like Iran's sales of crude oil, petrochemicals, and the assets of the Central Bank of Iran, the access to the banking system internationally. Those are all built on uh, the threat of U.S. sanction with international acquiescence. And it's that acquiescence that I fear we would be risking. And, and the alternative suggestion is that um, for countries who aren't willing to also continue their sanctions if we walk away, that we go to them and say, make a choice. How realistic is that? 
Uh, I think it would uh, be a very tough conversation. And I think when you're going to a country like China or India and telling them, we're going to dictate where you buy your oil from, which is what, frankly, in, we've been doing for the last few years, uh, they're going to say, with an eye on what? Right? What is your prospect for getting a nuclear deal so that we can lift these sanctions? And if they think that our bar, having moved the goalposts, sorry to mix sports metaphors, but that our bar is unrealistically high, then I think we will have a very hard time securing that cooperation. And that means our sanctions leverage will erode considerably. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.